The temperatures in the low 80s and the humidity in North Jersey has returned for today's fully padded practice. This is the Giants Trading Camp Report presented by Investors Bank. I'm Paul Dottino. He is Brandon London. So glad you could join us for a look in at today's session. Now, Brandon, we are exactly one week away from the preseason opener against the Jets. You've been through a training camp before. What's the emotion and the mentality as you count down those final days? Well, you know how I know we're close to a preseason game, Paul. It's because both of us have our training camp beards growing up, growing out right now. Yeah, I mean, the emotions, you're going to you're going to be heavy on the communication. It's going to be heavy on the competition. And like Coach Joe Judge said earlier, he's going to put out some stimulated situations so guys can get ready for live action. Coach also specifically talked about some installations that he was hoping to achieve today. What did that mean to you? Run action and screen passes. It's another dynamic that we can add to this offense and, and defenses. Our defense is going to have to play and be ready for with the NFL. So you think about guys like Kadarius Tony, you think about guys like John Ross and Sterling Shepard. Those are ways to get those guys the ball. You get a look at Daniel Jones uh, clapping hands with his offense as they prepare to run these drills. And I think one of the things that people want to keep in mind as they watch these, and you can explain it a little bit better than I can, is that they're trying to figure out how to best use the sideline. For a receiver, what are you using the sideline for? I'm using that sideline to open up a, a lane for that back or for that receiver who could be carrying that ball. Because as a receiver, if I pin that defender inside, that means he's got uh, that defender or that running back or that receiver, the ball carrier has space. You're away from the defense. And you got guys like the, with speed like Kadarius Tony and John Ross, they get up that sideline, it's gone. That's six. We get a look at number 28, uh, who was in the backfield, Devontae Booker. As we know, Saquon Barkley still not able to participate in practice. So Booker's been getting a lot of burn. And one of the things that the receivers need to do when they try to work stuff to the edges and the outside is get in the way and block. Absolutely. Uh, I remember in 2007, we were watching film. And I'm not going to call anybody out, but it was kind of a not so much a, a great effort in the in the blocking game. And Plaxico Burris with his southern draw, hey, dog, we, pra we, we, we block around here. And you saw how great of a blocker he was. There was no prima donnas in that group. And guys who wanted to break the running backs of Brandon Jacobs and Derek Ward. So blocking on that perimeter is very important in this league. That time, Daniel Jones did hand the ball off. We know there's a lot of run action that also goes on with the quarterback. And obviously, man, if you've got to block the edge, if Daniel's going to take off around the corner. Yeah, these run actions, here's the thing. Right now, they're handing the ball off. But you may see later on in practice, you want that to mirror the run action, the play action, the passing game out of it. So with the linemen, low hats, elephants on parade, everyone moving in unison. And as a receiver coming off the ball in the run game, just like in the pass game. You know, one of the things that I think a lot of people don't understand is that because there were cameras all over the field and now more assistant coaches than ever before, yeah. every movement you make is being scrutinized and being graded. And the wrong movement you make is going to hurt you in the coach's eyes. Absolutely. That's why, and not just the coaches, the scouts, the GMs out here. You even see the president, CEO of the Giants organization, Mr. Mara, out here. Everyone's watching because there's no such thing as a camp body anymore. If you're in camp, they're going to get you ready. They're going to see if you're one ready because later on in the season, you might have to be a guy that we developed that where you're getting one reps with Daniel Jones or you're out there lined up as CB2 with the Dory Jackson or James Bradbury. So you have to be football ready and you have to know and know you know, which is what Coach Tom Coughlin used to say. Now, what we have here is an isolation blocking yes. drill where yeah. it's a one-on-one -on -one trying to spring the back or the wide receiver free. Yeah, leverage. Leverage, you see here Jabril Peppers uh, up against, uh, I can't see who that is, but it's all about leverage. So you see the running back, the running back's gonna read our blocks. So one thing about this drill as a receiver, you wanna stay squared up at first because if I just automatically turn you to the outside, you only give the back one way to cut. So you keep them squared up and the running back chooses which lane he wants to rather go inside or outside and then you just read that off of reading the defender and you seal that defender inside or outside. And the thing that's important here to note is that in each case, the guy who's making the block has to understand where the play is designed to go. And then the guy who's got the ball needs to also understand that because if they're not in unison and your offensive player blocks left 
and then your ball carrier goes right, the play blows that blows up. Good call, Paul. Great call. Because like you said, let's say there's some sort of uh, draw, there's sort of inside run. Then as a receiver, yeah, I can kind of cheat that block a little and turn my hips, turn my butt to the inside like that there because we knew that's a design run to the inside. But it's something where it's a stretch or a toss. You kind of want to stay, like I said, you want to stay head up, you want to stay square because that's a two-way goal for that back then. You know, so it's the disciplines. And Coach, uh, Coach Coughlin, again, used to say the X's, the O's, and the Y's. Why are we running this play? Why are you using this leverage or this technique? It's only going to make you into a better athlete and a better football player. People should also understand that to do these kind of drills and to make them effective, you have to be in full pass because, as you can see, there is some contact going on yeah. between the offensive and defensive player in the one-on-one -on -one block. That's why you've got to get this stuff down now in the limited padded practices that you have. Yeah, Paul, you can't get physical in pajamas. <laughs> Let's be honest, you know. And I understand, I, I may be given my age and saying I'm, you know, I'm a little older guy now because those practices in Albany, those were dog days. You know, those were double padded practices. You don't have to day. apologize for okay. being old. You have a 2007 championship ring. That's right, and some gray hair in my beard as well, <laughs> as well. You know, so I mean, it's it's you you have to be able to get physical, Re regardless of the new rules, and we're protecting the players. At the end of the day, this is still a combat sport. This is still a physical sport, and that's how you evaluate guys. Not only can they be physical, but can they be smart as well? Because it's not, football is not about just the brute force of things. You still have to be able to be physical, compete, and still have a little finesse in you as well. Now, one of the key things that the coaches are looking for as we get a look at these blocking drills, uh, is the offensive player who's engaging keeping his hands to the inside yes. of the shoulder pads? Yes. You're getting a look right there, yes. Nick Gates. Yes, that's okay. a great block. Great block. Making sure you get your hands inside because once they come to the outside of those arms and shoulder pads, you're running the risk of getting a penalty flag. There you saw Patrick Graham, the defensive coordinator, having a shot with uh, with Johnson. Uh, you don't want to draw penalties. No, not at all. And that's and just think about how many runs big runs or big pass plays in Giants history have been called back because someone, whether it's a receiver or, or offensive lineman, the hand slipped to that outside. This is why, like you said, you have to be able to put the pads on and you great block here on that, on that outside way to, and, and on the defensive side, way to get off that. The defenders have to be able to use their hands, club wipe, be physical, dip, rip, whatever it is to get off that block and to make that plays. You just saw Brett Hagee, number 61, the undrafted rookie free agent, going up against veteran defensive tackle Danny Shelton. Mm. Talk about a low. Mm. He big. is one big dude, and it's hard to move him. Look, there's good on good, and then there's big on real big. <laughs> <laughs> that right there was big on real big. But it's great for these guys to get to, to switch up and go against. See, now we got a little – I'm sorry to cut that off. We have a little – Hands on the outside of the pads there. That could be called in, in, in this new NFL with the way the refs are calling holdings and all. But it's great for a, a, a guy like Brett to get up against a Danny Shelton and also a Leonard Williams because there's two different styles and two different body types. We saw B.J. Hill a moment ago, number 95, and that's not a deceiving picture on your screen that you saw. He does look bigger and thicker to me as he matures in, during his NFL career. Yeah, I mean, you've seen guys, they'll either come in bigger or a guy like Evan Ingram trimmed down a little for speed. So when you go into these off season programs, you go and you watch a lot of tape on yourself and you figure out, hey, my step, I'm not as fast as I was because I gained a little weight throughout the last off season. So you always find ways to tailor your game and tailor your body to be able to be available and to make plays for your team and your organization. Brandon, a lot of players are going to positional trainers during the offseason, and some guys, for example, Lorenzo Carter and O'Shane Zimenez, the Giants' two edge-rushing outside yeah. linebackers, actually went to MMA training to work on their hand speed and their hand-eye coordination. Now, that's not something a lot of guys did back in your day. No, not at all. Yoga wasn't something a lot of guys did back in my day. But as football continues to, to grow and expand and guys can really tailor their games, they go to these position, uh, specific uh, coaches and trainers so they can work on getting in football shape. Now it looks like we're going to go back to the 11-on-11 11 11 drill that we talked about yep. earlier, that run action and try to see what you can do about setting up the blocking scheme to the edges yeah and they're 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 getting a, a quick you see the quick whistle 
And if you're a guy that's in the back and you're watching, let's say you're a two or a three, I know there's no official depth chart now. These mental reps are just as important as getting in there and getting physical reps. But again, we saw it earlier as kind of a walkthrough pace. Now we're seeing it a thud pace. Everything should look the same as it did from when you installed it to when you walk through, walk through it and now you're doing it in a competitive period. Daniel Jones firing off to the right side. There's Sterling Shepard, a guy who I know you've admired him ever since he got here. Absolutely. I, he's three now. Sterling Shepard is a guy we've been able to watch not only grow as a player, but grow as a man. And we can see on that bubble screen on that outside, uh, Adoree Jackson won to that outside. Now, if I'm that receiver, John Ross, I know that bubble screen is coming to me. There's some sort of rolled up coverage, cloud coverage. I know that that defender is going to try and force that ball inside. I want to pin him to the inside so Shep can get around on that sideline and go do what we drafted him to do. Let's talk a little bit more about the passing game as we get another look at, at Jones taking a snap. The Giants really went out of their way as C.J. Board makes a catch yep. to go and get a big Spider-Man type receiver. Yes. You know all about that big target being <laughs> one yourself in Kenny Galladay. Now, he adds a different dimension and a different mix to a room that has guys who are, let's face it, not quite as tall as he is, and that will be a big advantage for Jones. Yeah, and he's sitting back watching these run action and these play actions, and he's probably foaming at the mouth right now because that's a way to get him down the field. That's right. another way to throw that ball down the field. Now, we saw that completion to C.J. Board, a nice intermediate route, a chain mover, or if he breaks through and, and he gets yaks off that, that's a big play. But just think about the deep posts, the deep corners, the deep overs you can do and throw to a Kenny Galladay down the field. And it all just comes together. And this is what they're doing. It's, the, it's like they're making a, a smoothie for the offense. You're just you're putting in your kale, you're putting in your pineapples, everything you do to make a, a tasty, tasty offensive smoothie. You're making me hungry. <laughs> Mike Glennon now at the controls as the Giants will continue to run this similar drill now with another set of players. One thing I think is also very interesting, and we've talked about this many times over the last couple of years uh, that Joe Judge has been here, is that he does a very good job of mixing and matching his first, second, and third teams on the depth chart. And his philosophy with that is you never know who's going to have to play with who. So he's giving everybody experience to play with everybody else and also trying to give everybody an equal chance to win a spot on the roster. Yeah, Paul, back in the day, if you were a three, you only went up against the threes. So you had to dominate against the threes to get bumps to the two. And, it, you know, like Mike Tyson's punch out, you got to you got to beat the the, the, the the one guy to get up to the to the next I level. I never got to the second level. I uh, never got to the second no. level. But now you're being able to see if a guy can play right away. Because like I said, there's no such thing as camp bodies anymore because of the new rules, because of injuries, because of COVID protocol. Guys have to be ready to play right away. So if you're wasting time seeing a guy dominate on the threes, you may have wasted two, three weeks of him getting quality reps against a one or, or against a two, or even going and, and, and running patterns with a, a Daniel Jones or going up against a James Bradbury. So now, by doing that, you get to evaluate how good a guy is, not only physically, but how good he's picked up that playbook. You see Danny Shelton, number 75. How oh, can I can't you miss him? him? He I took about half him. of the screen up. <laughs> he is one large guy, as we said earlier. Uh, talk to me, if you can, about the type of environment and chemistry you're seeing on this practice field. They have been loud. They've been chirping. They've been active. It seems to me like it's been a very energized camp with teammates who are really involved with each other and and you could tell that even from where we are on the patio there's a lot of chatter going on yeah both it, i hear it in, inside the organization is of it inside the facility as well in the building these guys their community they're always talking to each other always joking around with each other and that just builds the camaraderie like it's one thing paul the x's and nose and hey we're gonna run curl flat slant curl that's one thing we'll be on the same page of uh, we'll be on the same page when it comes to the playbook. But when it comes to wanting uh, to win more for the next guy than yourself, that's when you get championship football. You saw a moment ago, uh, Leonard Williams. Now we're getting a glance at a couple of the defensive backs. Quincy Wilson, number 28, came up with a nice interception during yesterday's session. I think the, the, the other thing that I've noticed is that we've heard a lot of the players here, younger and older alike, Talk about how the guy opposite them during the practice snaps is even helping them 
For example, Sterling Shepard is helping some of the DBs. Some of the young DBs are vice versa with the wide receivers, the D-line and the O-line. It doesn't always happen that way in every training camp. Iron sharpens iron, just like here. You're getting reps against a guy to where you know that's Will Hernandez and again, Danny Sheldon. There's two guys that you know are gonna play this year. You have to get this guy ready because he's gonna be going up against other all pro offensive linemen. We play the Rams this year. You're gonna go up against the Aaron Donald. So you gotta get these guys ready. What would you do to be Nick Gates right now, having to face <laughs> that kind of, uh, of girth, in this particular case, B.J. Hill, Hill, who, by the way, again, looks a lot bigger. Yeah, you love it. You want to get better. You, you, I mean, you don't want to get beat, but if you get beat, you learn from it. You know, if you're just walking around, you're just dominating each guy, you don't learn much from it. So when you get a chance to play against a guy who you know, as I said, has to get ready, to play against other O linemen or D linemen, you want to give your best to this guy because you know iron sharpens iron. Well, look at that. You've got two guys who are going to be a big part of what the Giants want to do this year. Leonard Williams looks thicker as yes. well, I yes. might add, going up against Andrew Thomas on that snap. Yeah, just his mentality, talking to him these last two weeks. This guy's locked in, Paul. This guy is locked in. You, you career year, eleven and a half sacks last and, year, and you couldn't even tell. He's just as hungry as he as he as he was playing pop Warner football back in the day. So it's something where a guy like that, you you want to give your all at these double padded practices because you want to see where you're at, and you even want to turn the heat up pretty soon. Get a look okay. at Nate Solder, okay, Nate. number seventy six. We all know as he goes up against B.J. Hill on that one, and Solder is drawing a lot of praise from head coach Joe Judge, who knew him from his days with the Patriots and is saying that Solder not only looks refreshed, yeah. but he is doing everything right. He's teaching guys, and he is so re-energized and invigorated. He's looking for a lot of good things out of Nate. Yeah, he prayed his, praised his one-on-one -on -one reps yesterday, mm -hmm. and we just saw again he a great one-on-one -on -one rep by him. Jonathan but, Harrison, number 64, backup center. Go ahead. But another thing, sometimes, for whatever the reason, sometimes it's okay to get away from the game for, for guys, to re-energize. And we talk, me and you talk about it all the time, how blessed we are to, to be able to come in and, and talk Giants football. So just think about it for a guy like that who is, okay, one year removed, I'm back in the lineup, I'm back able to compete. How blessed am I to have that opportunity? Of course, Solder opted out, family issues yes, due to the yes, COVID protocol, sure. and just very, very glad to be back. In fact, we were recalled about a week or so ago, talking to some of the media, Solder actually had said, hey, Joe Judge reached out to me mm. during the off season and I maybe had some second thoughts about coming back, but Joe wanted me, and that's all I needed to hear in order to come back. But that just goes to show what type of coach Joe Judge is, how guys were already run through a brick wall for him. You know, he's one of those guys, yes, he's going to coach you, he's going to coach you hard, but you can see he's had these personal, personable moments with these players. Now, it's the one thing, the coach being coached hard, you love it as an athlete, but as a man, when you can relate to your coach, you'll definitely play through him. Uh, I don't, what number we have that I can't see that. That was B.J. Hill once again. B.J. Hill. And, and if you see a lineman, you may not get there for a sack, but if you can draw a holding penalty, that's a sack as well because now you're sure. pushing that offense back. So. You, you're a oh, good swim move right there. And you're just seeing great technique. And you're talking about the martial arts and the handwork. That's how these guys, you take that, that you take what you learned and you put it in a drill. David Moa, number 96 with the uh, overflowing hair. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's going to get noticed. Now it won't draw a flag, at least not from <laughs> these officials, but it might from the fashion police. Uh, or, or you might get a, a head and shoulders uh, deal, you know, like Troy Palomalu. Troy Palomalu, big cat. He's, he's taking, <laughs> Hey, Big Cat, he's the guy with the hair now, you know, but it's I love watching these one-on-ones with the big guys. Obviously, as a receiver, you know, I, I love it, but as a receiver, why am I getting open is because these guys are working in the trenches. These guys are putting their face into the fire for a four, five, four, six guy like me to get down the field to make a play. How important do you think it is for some of the young players on this roster to see guys like Leonard Williams and Danny Shelton the veterans who are really breaking a sweat out here to set a good example. If you see a guy who you want to, who, who you want to kind of take his job out hustling you, outworking you, that's a problem. And now we're seeing the special teams drill here, Paul, the, the gunner going up against the two pesters. It's, you see Coach Quinn coaching him up. 
if you're going to split them, you better punch it hard and get skinny to get in between these two guys. Um, ideally, you want to you want to pick a guy to beat him. So here, here's that jab step to go. He wants to get inside. Now you want to fight hard to get inside. And this isn't pretty here, Paul. This isn't this isn't for the faint at heart. This is a dog fight, a 40 yard dog fight. And because if you're a guy that's getting doubled still as a gunner, that's respect. You know, you if you're getting singled out there as a gunner, that means they think that you they can take you out with one guy. So this is one of those drills where you can earn a living being a David Tyree, a Dwayne Harris, by getting down there and making plays on special teams. Yeah, Brandon, I think the hand fighting is probably the most important part of that drill, right? Yeah, absolutely. The, the footwork, the hand fighting, you put it all together, you get yourself a great rep and a great play. All right, Brandon, it's been fun. Oh, one week away, Paul. I'm ready for some football. For Brandon London, I'm Paul Dottino. This has been the Giants Training Camp Report presented by Investors Bank. We'll see you next time.